just want to say good morning and welcome to Phoenix Seventh Day Baptist Church. Now, just to make sure we're clear, most of us know this that this is recorded for online consumption at some point. And so, um, anyway, as far as I'm concerned, the main thing is what happens when we're physically together in the same place. So, uh, again, let me welcome you who are here. Uh, we're going to do a little bit more more singing than we usually do, and there's a there's a good reason for that. Um, it's it's because the Bible says things like, well, here's just one. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord my God is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. So our songs are about him. Let's pray. Father, we are thankful to you for this Sabbath, thankful for music to help us worship you. We just ask that you will hear our words, know our thoughts, so that we can please you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Sing. Pastor Steve, when you mentioned songs, he's my song. It made me think of like the bard who uh, in older days would go around with his like music and uh, sing, tell the stories of, of our great heroes. And it makes me think of David a lot. Um, so I'm excited that we're singing our first God, uh, first song, To God Be the Glory. If you don't mind standing, that'd be awesome. Um, and uh, yeah, enjoy. Let's hear God's word as it comes through Paul when he wrote to the Philippians. In chapter 4, start reading at verse 10. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again, though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased. I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Does anyone have any requests you that that we're not already aware of that we should share today? We certainly want to pray for those of our folks who are away today. Continue praying for people who are dealing with illnesses and treatments for those illnesses. Yes. Hurting up. I've been there. Not to double up on that one to my dad. Okay, let's. Oops, sorry. Yeah, either I find a new job. Right 
Of course, we continue to pray for for a pastor that God has for us, and if there's another meeting place that we need to be, that, that will be plain. We we want you know Jay had found a location from. We drove by it the other day, and it's a vacant lot. Whatever was there has been torn down. So I guess that won't work out unless we build something. Hey, what else? Could you? I would like to pray that everyone gets truth and encouraged to share. Right. Truth and the courage to share. Good prayer for us all. Let's pray together. Lord God, it, it is so good to know that you are there, that you are here, <laughs> there and here, everywhere. Just one way of describing how how great you are. And Father, thank you for your power that over all of these situations and all these needs that we have shared here today, for healing, for leading the future of this congregation, how we should serve you, where we should serve you. And Father, for job search, for travel mercies, Lord God, we're just grateful for your protection and your care. Just watch over us here. Bless us as we worship you and as we have fellowship together in Christ. We pray in his name. Amen. All right, we're going to sing two songs in a row. We're going to start with Steadfast Love of the Lord and then Ancient Words. They are both in your bulletin um, in the middle section, and they're shorter songs, so really quick, but still really nice. Thank you. Oh, if you would like to stand, please. Ancient Words. I think means words from the bible am i right okay good then, then in that case i'm glad i picked that song so this you know the song we sang just before this last one was written almost three thousand years ago the words i mean <laughs> from the book of lamentations philippians 4 the we also heard earlier, that's almost 2,000 years. I call that ancient. And we still have these words because God made sure that we still have them. I want to go back to Psalm 32 one more time, if you can find that. That's also pretty ancient. Um, I said the last time I was up here that the last verse of Psalm 32 was kind of like a, almost like a chorus at the end of the psalm. If we had, you know, put the words of this psalm into the bulletin, the first 10 verses would probably divide it into, you know, two or three stanzas. I mean, I think it worked very nicely to put it into two stanzas of five verses each. And then verse 11 would be like a chorus at the end of each stanza. I also said last time that I think this psalm could have been included in the New Testament because it has so much gospel content. Does anybody remember the, I mean, I know it's been a few weeks, but anybody remember uh, the some of the Christian teachings that we saw in the first 10 verses of this psalm. Uh, this is an open book quiz here, so it's okay to look. Uh, anyone, what do you find in those first 10 verses that's Christian? Forgiveness, you bet. Uh, anything else? 
and better confession. Yes. So far, you're you're going right through my list that I have here. Kind of place. Yeah. And there we get the idea of refuge and protection. Um, we also saw teaching. The Bible teaches us. We saw self-control. We saw obedience. That's a good list. The idea is that if these things are happening in our lives, then verse 11 says, well, let's read it. Psalm 32, 11. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Now that word shout can also be translated sing. And uh, I don't know, I say we're more of a singing church than a shouting church. Is that right? I don't know. Um, so I'm calling this Rejoice and Sing. Um, I've never gone in for the so called prosperity gospel. You ever heard of that? Um, it's also been called health and wealth gospel, or name it and claim it. Maybe these aren't all exactly the same thing, but they're all kind of variations of the same idea. And that idea is that if we are Christians, we should be prosperous and healthy and wealthy just because we're a child of the king. And so we can have pretty much anything we want and expect to be happy all the time. I hope I'm not overstating it, but that's the way I've heard it. This verse 11 here almost sounds like that. Almost. Rejoice, be glad, sing. Sounds like be prosperous and happy all the time. Does anyone remember that old song, uh, Don't Worry, Be Happy? I thought that was a good one. The implication of this prosperity gospel teaching is that Christians sh should never be unhappy because we should never have anything to be unhappy about. If only it were true. But we've all learned, some of us, the hard way, that life as a Christian isn't always happy. And we could say there's no reason why it should be. I mean, always. I mean, here's, here's another way to look at it. Do you want to have your heaven now? Or do you want to wait until the time it was promised? which is after this life. So when Psalm 32 says, rejoice, be glad, and sing, that's not quite the same thing as, as be prosperous and happy. The Bible usually has the idea of being content rather than happy. We saw that in what was read from Philippians. Um, in that same part, just a few verses later, Paul talked about sometimes going hungry, sometimes having to go without, sometimes being in real need, but always, no matter how much he had or how much he didn't have, he was content. And he even said how that happened because he had learned to be content. Apparently, being content doesn't come naturally. It's something we have to learn, sometimes through hard experience. So going back to verse to uh, Psalm 32, verse 11, don't get the impression that all this rejoicing and singing is about being rich and having everything you want. Now, I haven't forgotten that this psalm was written by a king, King David. 
Kings are usually rich, aren't they? Uh, actually, a lot more than David was his son Solomon. Really became filthy rich. But if Solomon is the one who wrote the book of Ecclesiastes, as most people think, boy, read that book sometime. You'll see that his that uh, his riches didn't seem to do do him a whole lot of good. The fact is, rich people usually don't do very well at being content. Uh, the more they have, the more they want, and it never ends. Okay, if that's not what the singing and rejoicing is about, then what is it about? in Psalm 32. Well, we already saw, of course, some of the reasons for this in the first part of the psalm. So now verse 11 shifts slightly. It isn't so much about why, but it's about who should be rejoicing. And the answer to that is given two ways. It says, you righteous and you upright in heart. Are these different people, or are these two ways of describing the same people? You should know the answer to that, because after all, this is Jewish poetry. <laughs> and they were always saying the same thing in two different ways. So here it's probably the people who are righteous and bright in heart. Two ways of saying the same thing. Who are these people? And what are they like? Are we among them? If I'm reading this correctly, uh, righteous is a theological description, and upright in heart is a word picture or illustration. Remember, Jewish writers and speakers, including Jesus, often used word pictures or parables to help make the point. Being righteous, then, is the result of what David talked about in verses 1 through 5, which we looked at a few weeks ago. Remember that that part of the psalm was about sins being forgiven. And if that's true, then we have something to rejoice about. And here's why. Righteous means that we're right before God. We're in God's favor. Uh, we're clean in his sight. Rejoicing is appropriate because being with God is so much better than being against him. Remember what it says in Hebrews 10. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hand of the living God. So, when you meet God, would you rather do it with fear or with joy? Well, the joy doesn't have to wait till then. David says, rejoice, even now. So, that's the theological description. Righteous. The word picture here may, might not be quite so easy. Uh, upright in heart. What does that mean? Well, let's just look at the picture. What's the opposite of upright? Depending on what you're talking about, the opposite might be uh, <clears throat> maybe bent over, falling down leaning one way or the other. You can see those kinds of things, can't you? And they aren't very nice pictures. But now imagine and see in your mind a healthy tree growing straight and tall. Or even better, picture a strong young soldier standing at attention. Or maybe if if you can think of someone who everyone honors and respects, 
this person is upright. No matter how you see it, being upright is good and right. <laughs> so if your heart is upright, well, in the Bible, well, that's a whole study sometime, how the Bible uses the word heart. Uh, it's often pictured as the place where, where we love and where we hurt, where we remember and where we make decisions and where we trust. And it's where you rejoice. In Bible talk, your heart is the real you. So if the real you is upright and not bent over or falling down, that's very good. Someone who is right with God, someone whose sins are forgiven, there's just nothing better in the world. So if that's true for you, how could you not rejoice and sing? So one of the nicest ways, I think anyway, one of the nicest ways to rejoice is to sing. Sing, all you who are upright in heart. And of course, that's one of the reasons why we sing every Sabbath. Ever since God invented music in the first place, singing has been an important part of worship, or I should say, an important kind of worship. Not the only kind, but an important kind. And here's why. Music is powerful. Uh, you can take any message or any emotion, and you can make it even more powerful with music. Now, why do you think they always put music in the movies? Because it increases the tension and the emotion of whatever is happening. Now, I'm not sure why music does that. I suppose it's because God made it that way, and he made us that way. And I suspect that the kind of music you like probably has the most influence or power in your life. Just remember that music can be used for good reasons and not so good reasons. It can be used to serve God, or it can be used to serve the devil. God's people have always worshipped him by singing. Goodness, that's why we have 150 psalms in the book, plus many other songs in other parts of the Bible, plus many, many other psalms and hymns and spiritual songs that have been written since then. Songs for Christians should, should have good words that agree with the Bible, like Psalm 32. Obviously, it agrees with the Bible, because it is Bible. If nothing else, after we've gone through Psalm 32, if nothing else, I hope we've, we've learned to have some discernment in our choice of music that we listen to and that we sing. Now, I'm not really talking about here the style of the music. Lord knows we would never agree on what is the best musical style, and we probably won't convert each other over to our favorite style. No, I'm talking here about the words of the songs and the content of those words. What are the words about? What are they saying to us? Do they agree with the Bible? Or are they at least not anti-God and anti-Bible? You, you know as well as I do that along with all the good popular music, there's all there's some really awful stuff out there. And goodness, it seems to get more evil all the time because the marketers think that that's the only way they can keep selling it. Please be careful. 
about the music and especially the songs that you listen to. Again, yeah, it doesn't have to be right directly out of the Bible, word for word, but we don't need to be listening to anything that uh, undermines our faith in God or leads us into sin. So be careful. Let your music help your faith, not hurt it. Let your choice of music help you to glorify God. Let's sing another song and then we'll then we'll close with prayer. All right, in the theme of what Pastor uh, Steve has shared with us, let's uh, stand together and sing Rejoice, Ye Pure in Heart. All right, let's Bye. close with a short prayer together. Therefore, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, and sing praises to your name. Amen.